Okay. How? Amplitude is? Three. Three. Now, Robert, answer me this, please. The book is listing it as negative three in the back. Am I not? Okay. So, great point. A lot of you might be wondering, why in the back of the book was it saying negative three? I have that same question. Amplitude means distance from the midline. So, we're going to list it as positive. What does the negative mean to us, though? Good. Reflect over X. No, you're awesome. It's just when I'm talking. Okay, how many cycles from 0 to 2 pi? Or what's the frequency? 2. There are 2 cycles from 0 to 2 pi. Now remember, period literally means physical length of 1 cycle. So based on this, what would 1 cycle be? What would the length of it be? Pi. Or we could use our little formula. Period is 2 pi divided by B, which that means it's pi. Okay, and then describe the transformation in words. What? Okay, I'll circle it. Tried to three. Yep. Good. Right pi halves. Way to go. Guess what people do on the test? They say right pi and then they get it wrong. Down pi. Okay, sweet. Awesome. Okay, what I want you to do now is erase your whiteboards and write two equations. One for that function and one for that function. Technically, technically, we could write a sine or cosine function for both of these. However, let's make it easy on ourselves. Let's look at this and see what maybe would be easiest. So looking at this function, aren't we starting at the at the zero? Are we at the max? Zero min, zero max. What, what has that? Cosine. Okay, cosine of x. Write a cosine of x function so we can check them and all be the same. Then right here, notice at the zero, we're at the... 0 max, 0 min, 0. So wouldn't that probably be better to do a sine? Probably easier. Okay, sweet. Do a sine equation, a cosine equation, go. I like how Robert's group back there was talking about the amplitude. They said, it, well, um, mid, like we need to figure out the, in, what, how are you guys saying it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so they looked at the lowest point and the highest point, and they kind of looked at what's that total distance? Eight. So the halfway mark would be distance of four, correct? So then up from here down one, two, three, four would be my midline. So isn't it at one? You guys mostly got this one right. So now B. How, how, there's many ways to find B. How did you guys find B? You counted. You counted how many cycles? Max. Zero. Min. Zero. Max. There's one. Max. Zero. Min. Zero. Max. Two. Max zero, min zero, max three, max zero, min, min, who did it that way? Four. You didn't do it that way? Awesome, I love that. Love it, yes. Do you guys see what he's saying? He just looked at one cycle and he said, okay, so my period is pi half, which is equal to two pi divided by B, correct? Period is equal to two pi divided by B. Isn't that a true statement? The length of one cycle, then he multiplied up by 2, multiplied up by b, so then he divided by pi, so then do you see how he got b of 4? I like that way. However way works, though. So. so you have y is equal to, my amplitude was 4 sine of 4x, it's cosine? Cosine of 4x, you're right. And then it was plus 1. Who got it right? Awesome. On purpose, they will make sure to not give you, do you see how you can see from 0 to 2 pi with your eyeball? They're going to on purpose give you like an increment from like here to here so that you have to think. They only give you that information. So that you have to really think, okay? So keep in mind, it's not always going to be this easy. So if I did give you, you know, you'd have to do some thinking, but we could. I know we could. All right, so let's do this one, how I would think through it, just because what if I didn't give you clear to 2 pi? You couldn't go through and count? You have to kind of think. So let's say that I cut it off right here, at pi. How could we think through our B value? The same thing. 0 max 0 min 0, so the length of one cycle is pi halves, right? Do you say... P 
period is equal to 2 pi divided by b. You put in what you know, which is pi halves is our period, and go through the math. Everybody good with that? Because I am going to give you times, at times I'm going to say write an equation, given that the period is 3 fourths, go through and write the equation of the graph, for example, and you'll have to go through and do some math. Okay, cool. So what's the answer here? Y is equal to sine of 4x plus 1. Awesome, moving on. So a couple things to note so that we can really see how tangent works and understand it really easily here. So everybody, here's sine of x. We have to really be good at understanding how sine of x works and cosine of x. Now remember, one cycle for sine would be 0 max, 0 min, 0, and then that pattern starts over. Isn't that the period means when do we start over? When does that cycle repeat? So after that little s happens, that's when sine repeats. For cosine, it's max, 0, min, 0, max, and then it starts repeating. So our period for sine was 2 pi divided by b, and then the physical length of that cycle from there to there is 2 pi. And so on, same with cosine. Now I want to point something out. If I said to you, given this graph for sine, when is sine equal to zero? You would say at what value? Literally. Zero pi and two pi. That's when literally sine equals zero, correct? And then for cosine, when does it equal zero? Pi halves and three pi halves. That's going to be way important to us when we start graphing this stuff. All right. So here we go, a reminder of asymptotes and how they work. We're going to be dealing with some division functions and graphing division. If you're graphing a rational, you're going to have vertical asymptotes and sometimes horizontal. But we're going to focus in on vertical asymptotes. So remember, if we had a function x plus 3 divided by x minus 2, we would have to say we definitely can't divide by 0. So x cannot be 2, correct? That's what creates a vertical asymptote at 2. Because our function is going to come and get really close to it, but it can't equal it, so then it will jump over and continue onward. It jumps over the vertical asymptote. So everybody, we're good with why the asymptote is at 2. Because it can't be that value, so that asymptote creates a place where our function will never be. Can anyone remember by chance where this horizontal asymptote at 1 comes from? Yeah, you're right. X and X, you're right. So you're saying that's degree 1, degree 1? So then you divided the leading coefficients, right? Very good. Way to remember that. You guys, you're going to have to be really good at graphing and remembering how to graph rational functions for calculus. Everybody good? Now, I had somebody in first hour say, I don't remember. So I'm going to think about horizontal is a y, an output, correct? Horizontal output. So I had somebody first hour say, well, let's plug in something really large and see where our function is approaching. So they said, if we plug in a million, a million plus three divided by a million minus two. That plus 3 and minus 2 is not going to matter if we're talking a million. A million divided by a million is 1. Does everybody see how they thought through it? Okay, cool. All right, so here that brings us to tangent. So remember, tangent of x, we're really graphing sine of x divided by cosine of x. Therefore, we're really graphing a rational function. So we have to say, well, in tangent, where it's sine divided by cosine, it's true to say because we can't divide by 0, cosine of x cannot be 0. That is where our vertical asymptotes are going to come in. Anytime that cosine equals zero, we will have a vertical asymptote for tangent. So remember that tangent, because it's sine over cosine, is the y value divided by the x value. So where does the y value divided by the x value become zero? When is basically easier to think about, when is cosine zero? There at pi halves and at three pi halves. So think about, if we graph this, anytime we hit there, we're going to have an asymptote. We're going to jump over, continue. Have to jump over, continue. Does everybody see what I'm saying? Now also, negative direction. So if I'm graphing tangent negative, I'm going to get to negative pi halves and have to jump over with an asymptote and go up. So our asymptotes, I just listed out a few of them. Here are some vertical asymptotes for tangent. Pi halves, negative pi halves, three pi halves. So it's every other, isn't it every other quadrant? So what's the next one? Yeah, we could do negative 3 pi halves as well, 5 pi halves, what else? 7 pi halves, am I right? And so on. We could list out then forever. You're right, negative 3 pi halves, so that, that's good enough. I was just making a point here. So for tangents, anytime we hit the top or bottom, top or bottom. All right, sweet. 
All right, so let's list out some points so that we can see what's happening for tangent, and we're going to look for a pattern just like we did with sine and cosine, where sine was 0 max 0 min 0, and cosine was max 0 min 0 max. Let's look for a pattern for tangent. Here we go. So at negative pi halves, that would be right here. Tangent is y divided by x. Didn't we just say that was undefined right there? Asymptote. Can we divide by 0? No. Is there everybody see what I'm putting undefined? Okay, now we're going to plot pretty points. So for sine, we only graphed sine and cosine. We graphed here, 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 and here. But there are more pretty points for tangent. Why? Because look at in between. So now if we're at negative pi force, which is right here, what's this divided by this? Negative 1, right? But yeah, you're on the right track. Now let's go here. What's this divided by this? 0. Now we're up at pi force. What's this divided by this? 1. You're right. And now at pi halves, we know we're undefined, aren't we? And moving on, this divided by this. Negative 1, 0, 1. Oh, you're seeing a pattern happening, right? So there's our pattern. Aren't we repeating? Undefined, negative 1, 0, 1. Undefined, negative 1, 0, 1. So what's this going to be? Undefined, negative 1, 0, and we could go on forever. Does everybody see the pattern for tangent? So I want to point something out. When are we repeating? After how much distance? So from here to here is actually when we repeat it. So that would mean that a length of a cycle, because cycle means when do we repeat, is not 2 pi for tangent. It is negative pi halves to pi halves is a pi in length. Does everybody see? So this repeats, tangent repeats after pi amount of time. All right, so our period for tangent is not like sine and cosine. Period for tangent is going to be pi. So now if we change our b, it'll just be pi over b. Everybody good with that? Okay, I just listed all those points. So this is going to really help you see how to graph tangent with all the tricks. So I just, we already did these points. I've just listed them out like this. So let's go in and let's put in our, the first thing we do for tangent is put in all of our vertical asymptotes, okay? So let's start here. Now, if we start at, let's start at negative pi halves. So negative pi halves would be my first asymptote, vertical asymptote. And then the next one is at pi halves, isn't it? Everybody? Bottom, the next place would be the top, the next place the bottom, so where would we be next? Three pi halves, wouldn't it be everybody? Okay. Three pi halves. The top. So then where would be my next one if I wanted to graph a couple? Five pi halves, wouldn't it? Does everybody understand what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Look at our points. Okay, cool. Now, next thing I'm going to graph is my zeros. So I know when people ask, well, why didn't we start at zero here? Why did we start at negative pi halves? Well, because if we did start at zero, then that would only be like a half of the cycle. Does everybody see? So that's why for tangent, we always go and start. We want to draw in our first full cycle. So do you see how our first full cycle is going to be split amongst the, the y-axis here? Okay. All right. Now let's graph our zeros. So our zeros are in between. Look, zero. We have a zero at zero. Then look at the next zero is at. Pi. We don't have pi drawn. So where would it be though? Okay, pi. So that'd be our next one. One pi halves, two pi halves, three pi halves, four pi halves would be two pi. So there's our next zero. Look. Is everybody with me? And then from there, that's enough plotting on the x axis, I would say. So from there, let's just use this to help picture where to put our points. So now we're at negative pi force, which would be right here. So at negative pi force, we're down at negative 1. And then at positive pi force, we're at positive 1. So at positive pi force, we're up at positive 1. So then it's coming down like this and approaching the asymptote. And it's going up, and then it's approaching the asymptote. Does everybody see? And then it won't just repeat. That's what's happening here, right? 
So what we're here at, look at, here was one pi force, two pi force, that three pi force will be at negative one. Look at my points. And then we're at five pi force will be at positive one. So it's increasing. Does everybody see how tangent is increasing from left to right? Well, that same pattern will happen. So notice now we're going to use that to graph this quicker. We're going to say halfway between the zero and asymptote is going to be up here to be increasing. Halfway between the zero and this asymptote will be down here so that we have an increasing tangent. Sweet. Does everybody see? A couple of things to notice about this just so that it helps you be able to notice the pattern and graph tangent quickly. We know that this was a length of pi, was it not? Length of pi, and then it repeats. Length of pi, it repeats. Length of pi, it repeats. So one thing to notice is the first two asymptotes were split evenly over the y-axis. We talked about that. So look, taking this and dividing it by 2 would be this asymptote and this asymptote. Do you see why it's negative pi half and pi half? Split evenly across the y-axis. Unless we shifted this, then it would be different. Okay, cool. So let's do another one. So let's start getting some more advanced ones. We'll be able to go pretty quick here. So if we have the uh, tangent function that has this format, a tangent b of x, we would say our amplitude is just like sine and cosine, and then b is just like sine and cosine, except for our period is going to be instead of 2 pi over b, it's just pi over b, because tangent repeats after pi. All right, so the first thing we graph is our vertical asymptotes. So let's go ahead and figure out the amplitude, which is, Three, my period would be pi divided by one half, wouldn't it be? Pi divided by b. So then my period for this tangent is actually two pi. So it's going to be taking twice as long to complete one cycle. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw my asymptotes. So we, I, there's many ways to do this, but I noticed on the last tangent one, we're going to be split evenly from here to here over the period. So if our period from here to here is 2 pi, yep, it's just a bigger space. Yep. So then this is at negative pi. This is at pi. Does everybody see why? Let's draw in those asymptotes. First things first. Yep, you're right. So now we're going to go another 2 pi in distance. So that would put me at 1 pi plus 2 pi is 3 pi. Let's do at least 3. So then that would be 3, 4, 5 pi. So now I'm going to draw in those asymptotes. Now if we notice a pattern for tangent, but after that, if you look back here, halfway between the asymptotes will be the zero. That's going to happen again. So here we go. You're going to label your x-axis with the asymptotes and the zeros. That's all I care about. So zero, two pi, four pi. That's the halfway distance. So it's going to be zero there, zero, zero. And then if you will go back to the parent function, halfway between the asymptote and the zero, it was negative to make it increasing. Halfway between the zero and asymptote, it was up the amplitude amount, and that would make it increasing. So here we go. Our amplitude is up. One, two, three. Down. One, two, three. So now we'd say... Halfway between these two, we're down at the amplitude. Halfway between these two, we're up at the amplitude. So it's coming up, approaching the asymptote, and coming down, approaching the asymptote. And then that pattern repeats. Yes. From here to here. The length of a cycle. And then it just repeats. Because the period means, like, where does it? Pi. Because it repeats after that pi amount, and for tangent, where sine doesn't repeat and cosine doesn't repeat that same pattern until 2 pi, all the way around. Yeah, because now it's that b means the number of cycles before you repeat from 0 to 2, from 0 to pi for this one. Normally, does that make sense? B is the number of cycles from 0 to pi. Because tangent's length is pi, not 2 pi now. Everybody? Yeah, because if you remember back from here, it started over after just pi amount. So that's why our period for tangent is pi. So now let's keep going with the same pattern. From here we'll be up. From here we'll be up at our amplitude. Here we'll be down at our amplitude. Down. 
So tangent is increasing. That's one thing you're going to have to remember. The tangent is increasing from left to right. Because cotangent, it works the same way as tangent. It's just decreasing from left to right. Yeah, and then it is shifted over. The, the asymptotes are different places for cotangent, but yes, it works the same way. Now, I didn't have you do this, and I want to, just to have you guys see what's happening here. So once again, just to get the idea of the as how the asymptote works. So we know that this pi hat is 90 degrees real quick. So if you make sure your calculator is in degree mode, I want you to type in, if you type in tangent of 90, it's going to say error, because that's an asymptote, right? But we can get closer and closer. We can approach that value and get closer and closer, and we will have a function. If you type in tangent of 89.9, it gives you like 500. So we're going over almost to 90, up to 500. You see how that's really large? And then if you type in tangent of 89.999, getting even closer, it's a huge number. So it's just increasing. This is increasing without bound. Does everybody see how that's working? Cool. Hey, try one by yourself. Do you want to try one by yourself to make sure we're good? Okay, so you should say my amplitude is 1. For this one, my period is going to be uh, pi <coughs> divided by 3. So the length before it repeats is pi thirds in length. So then you'd say, okay, well, this is going to be split evenly over pi thirds. So then this tick mark would be at negative pi 6, and this tick mark would be at pi 6. Do you see why? Because I cut it in half, everybody. Okay. So then I got to go another pi thirds in length. There will be my next asymptote. Pi six plus pi thirds, I believe, is pi halves. Then add another pi halves plus pi thirds, which would be five pi six. So I'll draw in my asymptotes now. After I did it for you. So then in between is my zeros. You would need to put in those points, so this is zero, obviously. You do that plus that divided by two. That plus that divided by two. So you put those in. I'm not going to right now. So let's just keep going upward and onward. So then from there, you'd get, say tangent is increasing over halfway up the amplitude, which was one. So I'll just call that one, negative one, and down the amplitude. How do you feel about this tanner pack key? I feel great about this. Okay, good. Okay, hey, awesome. It's missed to you, sir. <laughs> and this and the, my name's not even Whitney. Just kidding, it is. All right, easy peasy. Yes. You can like you're just finding the halfway distance. You say one half plus five six divided by two. Because I'll put you in between. But I just do it in my calculator, so I don't have to do the common denominator. So that plus that divided by two would put you between. Yeah, because if you had a look, if you do this plus this divided by two would put you at zero. Yeah. Okay, now try that one. Then you draw your little dots in between and go super. There was somebody really funny in this class that left a dove chocolate on my desk that said, be your own valentine. It was really funny.
Okay, so let's graph cotangent. So instead of it being tangent, which is sine over cosine, now cotangent is cosine over sine. So this is going to have to adjust your thinking a little bit because the asymptotes will be in different spots. So we are now looking for when does sine equal zero. So notice sine is y. So it equals zero here and here instead of at the top, here and down here like cosine. So anytime we hit pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on, we're going to have an asymptote. So notice at zero, we're undefined. Then at pi, we're undefined. Then at 2 pi, we're undefined. So anytime we hit those places, we'll be undefined. Then at pi fourths, notice at pi fourths, we're at 1, aren't we? Just like with tangent. And then at pi halves, we're at 0. At 3 pi fourths, we're at negative 1. So isn't this the pattern very similar to tangent? Yes. Almost identical. So then undefined, 1, 0, negative 1. So this is literally tangent, but decreasing. Just the asymptotes are in different spots. So notice on cotangent, our first asymptote will be at 0. Not split evenly over the y-axis, but at zero. So then our period is still pi in length. If you notice, it repeats after pi in length. So then our next asymptote will be at pi, 2 pi, and we could draw as many as we want. But then it works the same way as tangent. Halfway in between would be the zero. So right here, right here. So notice at pi halves, right? Pi halves were at zero, at three pi halves were at zero, and then notice at pi fourths we're at positive one, at three pi fourths we're at negative one. So it is just the same as tangent, instead though it's decreasing from left to right. So that pattern works here. So you'll just have to remember the difference between tangent, because this is what's hard is people will forget well, where does the asymptotes go. So for tangent it's split evenly, and then for cotangent, it starts at zero and goes over. So don't forget that. So here we go. Let's graph. Let's graph some cotangents. If you want to see them next to next to each other, that there's tangent, there's cotangent. So aren't they the same graph? Just one's a transformation from the other. Because if you notice, if we shifted this asymptote over right there and then reflected it, we would be to our cotangent graph. Yeah, so if we reflected it, then it would become the other function. We reflected it over x. Yeah, so, but we're going to just kind of keep it basic. So here we go. Let's grab this one. So you say my amplitude is 2. My period is pi divided by 2. So now what you would do is for cotangent, your first asymptote would be at 0. Then our over here, we would be at pi halves. 2 pi halves, because we're going another pi halves in length, which is pi 3 pi halves. And then in between, so we could do a negative 1 as well if we really wanted. I'm just going to stick with the positive. So in between pi fourths, we put in our zeros. And then cotangent is just a decreasing tangent. Super easy stuff. Zero. 0, 0, over 1, up 2 units, over 1, down 2 units, and it repeats. Are we good with graphing cotangent? So you will have to remember cotangents decreasing, tangents increasing. Okay, we are almost done with the lesson. So, we're going to be graphing cosecant once again because cosecant is really 1 over sine. Um, because of that, we are going to have asymptotes again, vertical asymptotes. However, this you're going to find to be actually really easy. So, we're going to see the first time is going to feel weird, but then after that you're going to be like, wow, that is so dang easy. So, if we just look at this here, if we were to plot some points, I'm going to actually start at zero. So remember that cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine. So we know that sine cannot be 0. 
So if you notice, sine is Y there and there. We're going to have asymptotes. Now let's look at some points. So let's start at zero. At zero, we're undefined, aren't we? Okay, and then at pi, we're also undefined. So there is our starting over, our full cycle from here to here, which is also pi in length. Okay, and then pi force. Um, there's a reason I'm having you plot an ugly point. You'll see why. So 1 divided by root 2 over 2 is the decimal 1.14, I believe. And then let's do 1 divided by 1, and we get 1. 1 divided by root 2 over 2 would be 1.14. And then we repeat. But isn't it going to be negative the next time? <coughs> Won't this be negative now? Right? Negative, negative. So these will just be negative. And this will be negative 1. Okay, cool. So let's just, this is how we really do it. Okay, what we're going to do is instead of thinking about cosecant, we're just going to graph a regular old sine function. So that's going to help us graph cosecant. So let's just graph sine. So 0 over 1, 2, 3, 4 tick marks puts me at 2 pi. Let's graph two cycles. Over 1, 2, 3, 4 puts me at 4 pi. My amplitude's one, negative one. Okay, so watch how nice this is. If we were to graph sine, it would look like this. So the pattern, zero, max, zero, min, zero. Zero, max, zero, min, zero. Now with cosecant, there's a secret hidden sine function graph. So I'm not gonna actually draw in sine because it's not really there. So I'm gonna have this invisible sine drawn. So I'm doing a dotted line because it's really not there, but it helps me graph cosecant. Can everybody see it? Okay, continuing. Okay, now think about it. We literally just said that cosecant is 1 over sine of x. So we just said sine of x cannot be 0. So where does it equal 0? Right there, right there, right there, and right there, and right there. True? That is literally where your asymptotes are. Do you see how easy that makes it? That is literally, guys, up and down. That is literally, I can see people's confused faces. Look, here's one, here's negative one, here's zero. Does everybody see how this is when sine equals zero? Zero, 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 sine is zero right there, right? So that is where my asymptotes go. It makes it easy. Draw that in, wherever it hits zero. Now, by definition, sine is the reciprocal, or sorry, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So what happens is these reciprocate. So look at these points. We're going over pi fourths, which is right here, up 1.14. Then we're going over pi halves, up 1, over 3 pi fourths, up 1.1 again. So it's going to come up by the asymptote, come up by the asymptote. So do you see how the frown becomes a smile? It reciprocates up to be a smile. <coughs> Frowns become smiles, smiles become frowns, because that would be the reciprocal. You get what I'm saying? So look right here. Smile becomes a frown. The red part's what's actually graphed. All the other stuff is just invisible that helps me graph. Same exact thing with cosine and secant. So now that you know how to do Cosecant, you know how to do secant, yes. So let's grab this one really quick. Here we go. So you say, cosecant is one over sine, so we're just gonna focus, instead of graphing this, we're gonna graph sine. So we're gonna do y is equal to two sine of x plus pi fourths. So with just left and right, I find it easiest to use the tactic of the parent function, just a reminder. So theta, theta t, let's write down our parent function points. For sine, we go zero, pi halves, pi, three pi halves, two pi. I'm just writing out the parent function point. So then think of your pattern for sine. Zero max, zero, min, zero. There's my parent function points. How to move this. And then our new points, we'd say, okay, this is stretched by two, so we're gonna times by two. And then we're shifting left pi fourths. 
So that means we would be taking all of these and going to subtract pi fourths. So my new x, y points to plot, zero minus pi fourths is negative pi fourths. Pi half minus pi fourths is pi fourths. Pi minus pi fourths, I believe is three pi fourths. Three pi halves minus pi fourths is five pi fourths, and then two pi minus pi fourths is seven pi fourths. And then we would times all of these by two. So zero, two, zero, negative two, zero. So let's hurry and graph that sine function. So my first tick mark, negative pi fourths, and so on. All right, so then we would have, we have these points we can literally plot. And once again, just do a dotted line. It's not really there, it's just helping us graph. So now we can say, okay, now we can draw in our asymptotes because it's where this equals zero. So that would be here and here. And here. And then because they're reciprocals, rounds become smiles. Smiles become frowns. So then this would be a smile. <coughs> Everybody good with this? Pretty easy stuff? Okay, cool. That same thing happens with secant, so with cosine. So we won't go through the nitty gritty. You get the picture. So let's just grab this one. This is my last example. The rest of the time will be yours. You can go get a dang cinnamon roll or whatever if you need to. Woo. So let's go through this one. Do you want to try it by yourself or just go through it together? Okay, let's go quick. So we'd say we grab cosine of 2x, would we not? So my period would be 2 pi divided by 2, which is pi. Luckily, because there's no shift left and right, I don't have to use the parent function, so I just go... Okay, zero, one, two, three, four tick marks puts me at pi. One, two, three, four is two pi, and then we'd fill in the rest. <coughs> so then cosine is max, zero, min, zero, max. Zero, min, zero, max. And now my asymptotes are when cosine equals zero. So right there, right there. So then this would become a smile, a frown. Are you guys good to do the homework by yourself? Yes, ma'am. Sweet. Is that guy good hey. to date by himself? Yes. I, I go by, um, by myself on dates all the time. There's the true page number. You're seeing like a typo again. I know. <laughs> yeah. Tanner Papati, you sure can. Thank you. Okay.